This is your Dragon of Ice Fire Peak gameplay video for the Circle of Thunder quest from the D&D Essentials Kit. Hi, Bob here, and welcome to Bob World Builder, the D&D channel where we improve our games together. For a few tips on making this quest even more fun for your group, check out my DM guide and the full Dragon of Ice Fire Peak playlist linked in the description, and subscribe for new D&D videos every Wednesday. Who will you guys be playing for this quest? I will be playing Cloda, the human fighter, who can also cast spells but never really does. And my friends, Donabella Fiasco and Granok, the half-orc. <laughs> and I'll be playing Jung, the dwarf wizard. Cloda and company, you awake in the burnt, everything-smelling, ruined <laughs> manse that you rested in after your big battle with the orcs, and you're among your companions there, Donabella, good old Fainor and Zelfar, and you're startled awake by Granuk, who comes to you guys saying, hurry, hurry, the others have returned, they have important news, so you guys rush downstairs. You see a party led by another half-orc. In their company are eight other orcs. So you hear Granok and this other individual going back and forth in orcish for a minute, and then Granok turns to you again and says, Yes, what I thought is true. The others did not suspect us to come to an agreement with any humans. Pardon my <laughs> description. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the midst of summoning the great servant of Talos, Gorthok the Thunderbore. <gasps> Not Gorthok the Thunderbore! The very same. <laughs> and you can see now that he brings it up. Off on the horizon, great storm clouds encompassing the morning sky, darkening it heavily. He says, quickly, we must head to the Circle of Thunder to stop this summoning if we can, or stop Gorthok before it's too late. You! And he points at... Zelfar and Feanor, go to Falcon's hunting lodge, tell him of the impending attack before it's too late. And oh, okay, damn. <laughs> and then uh, the other half-orc <laughs> says, oh, and we found this one wandering in the woods, but I guess we're all friends now. And he <laughs> and, uh, and Jug, you kind of wander up there, your hands tied in front of you. Free uh, him, he's my buddy. Yeah, Granuk with their clawed gauntlet. Shwing. Slices yeah. your bonds. Thank you, new friend Cranock. And you are free. I rub my wrists together. I was helping the village with evacuations. Thought I would check up on you guys, and then this happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Inverna's dead. I know you and her were secretly in love. Well, the cat's out of bed now. <laughs> <laughs> she was a good fighter, <clears throat> a good soldier. Yeah, she was. I'm sad about it, but, yeah. uh,. Now we have Granok. Oh, yep. Half orc, half boar, half human. <laughs> All friend. All friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The war reaches on. waves. <laughs> you guys head off at a pretty brisk pace toward the Circle of Thunder. Granok leading the way with you, Cloda, in front. You're heading through the Neverwinter Wood, trudging through this thick forest. It's dark overhead, in the woods usually, but even darker still, as if it were night, as the clouds are growing and growing heavier and heavier. I trudge as quickly as I can trudge. <laughs> Roll for trudge. Okay. So you guys are sprinting through the woods when all of a sudden, a tree that moments ago appeared as if a harmless but large normal tree lashes out toward Granuk and Cloda in the front. 25 to hit. Cloda, 13. It doesn't hit me, but it does hit Granuk. Okay. 17 bludgeoning damage. Constricted by this tree and smacked into the ground and then also pulled up into the air. The one that just slides around your armor. You see also lifts back up into the air. Would have taken you up, but you were able to get out of the way at the last second. Roll initiative. Granok, you're not off to a very good start with this party. <clears throat> yes, this is one of our traps, actually. <laughs> Clodagh, you're up first. What do you do as this vine whips away from you? Uh, Granok, 
like, should I attack this tree, or is it like do your, it, your do friend? it? It's the okay. only way to stop it. <laughs> I attack the tree <laughs> with my dragon slayer great sword. Yeah, nineteen hits. Sixteen total. Nice. Second attack. Yeah, do it. Pew. Thirteen damage. Very good. So you broke off some of its lesser branches. Donabella will cast the one thing that she ever casts. <laughs> A 10. So yeah, it does fail. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, go, go down to Bella. You did it. Down to Bella uh, jumps and cheers. Yeah, five, five damage. Some sacred flames erupt around the lesser branches of this tree as well. Part of its crown is singed with radiant fire. Grandma attack with his clawed gauntlet. Hits. 13 total damage. Granuk, while in the branches of this thing, just tries to slash at the tendril that's wrapping him up. Doesn't cut it, but it does deal a good amount of damage, and it looks weakened. Jug, what do you do? I go up and cast Fireball. Bolt. Oh, fire bolt. bolt. <laughs> okay. Not bolt. Not fireball. Uh, 19 to hit. Yeah. <laughs> for 15 damage. And that's fire damage, I assume? Yes. Okay. All right, um, so Jug, describe your epic fire bolt attack. So I am at right at the branch that's holding granite embers, kind of just singe all the bark, freeing him. Yeah, you hit a spot between <coughs> the trunk and granite, and from there the fire erupts and turns to ash around Granik. He falls to the ground, catches himself okay, and the fire just continues to go toward the tree and basically just turns the whole thing to a crisp, and it crackles and goes still in place. Oh, thank you, friend. But quickly, we have no more time to waste. You guys continue to race toward the epicenter of this growing storm. You see lightning crackling down to the ground <coughs> at, the, at a tall hill in the distance. Thunder booming. <laughs> As these lightning strikes hit the ground, it looks epic and crazy. Oh, <laughs> okay. This is epic and crazy! You approach at the base of a 90 foot tall hill with trees spreading across its slopes. Atop the hill is a large ring of standing stones, much like a henge. Two ghastly figures dressed in hide armor and ash on their bodies dance around it with a number of smaller, you recognize Clodagh, twig figures. Mm. What the heck, man? <laughs> Grana reaches out his arm toward the others. Brothers and sisters, stop before... <laughs> No! <laughs> and a final burst of lightning, basically just like a freaking huge laser beam, hits the center of the ring of stones. You're all almost like blinded by this incredible light. As it fades in its form, you first just see the silhouette, and then, oh my gosh, it's really there. The figure of a huge sized boar with lightning tusks and big powerful hooves. Uh, <laughs> sparks casting between its tusk and em emitting from its eyes starts scraping the ground towards you all. Oink. <laughs> Skippy the Wonder Boar. Uh, roll initiative. <laughs> it is the two anchorites turn first. They see you guys. As Gorthok has landed there, they're both like fallen to their knees. They, for this round, are just gonna be frozen in indecision here. Which brings us to Jug's turn. Mm -hmm. What do you wanna do? Do something magical. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fight it. So I run up and I'm gonna try to use Fireball right at it, just go out with a bang. You wanna run up? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sideways. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> It is going to catch these two guys, but Granik will be just on the edge of it. Alright, they go for their deck saves. Wow. <laughs> mm. Ooh. 14 fire damage to each of these folks on the hill. Gorthok's turn. Charge toward Granik with its hooves and tusks. Yeah, so that 36 mixture of <laughs> bludgeoning and slashing and lightning and thunder damage all from ah! Gorthok. I'm going to say it sends him back just under the standing stone. And so ends Gorthok's turn. What are you doing, Clodagh? I'm going to get up close to it so it can't charge me. 
Rannoch is going to flee <laughs> so that I can be under the henge. Okay. Also, he uses his action to transform into a boar. Cloda runs up and makes two great sword attacks. 26 damage. Action surge. 21 damage. Yeah, Gorthok is not looking hot. The, the sparking charges between its lightning tusks are starting to fade a little bit. Donabella will cast aid, increasing mine, jugs, and Granox hit points all by five. Some charisma morale saves for our two anchorite friends, and they both just kind of back off out of the henge in fear and on fire now. Oh yeah, what Pretty... happened to all the twig blights from that? Uh... Oh, they definitely would have just burned uh, yeah. a Chris in the fireball. <laughs> And you see them both kind of drop into basically these little hatches in the hillside. Smoke trails leading up out of them (laughs) still. (laughs) And that takes us to Jug. Cast a spell! So I'm going to cast a spell. (laughs) I'm going to use uh, Fire fire Bolt. 14 damage. Okay. It literally goes through the now static and thunderous form of Gorthok as more lightning bolts strike stones around him. He shrieks up in pain, starts to collapse and fall, falls to one of its knees, gets back up and just like thrashes its tusks around a bit. It is now Gorthok's attack at you, Cloda, the one in front of it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he's struggling to get up to his feet again. And he can't, like, wedge his lightning tusks between those standing stones, nor stomp you with his thunderous hooves. As another lightning bolt strikes one of the stones. It's your turn, Cloda. So I'll just disengage. (coughs) And I'll go, here, pick, 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 pick. When Gorthog is outside of the circle, Granok will attack. Donabella will cast Shield of Faith on him. So he has plus two to his AC. Back to you, Jug. What do you do? You see this boar kind of scrambling. Looks like it's turning your direction now. Like it's going to escape the hinge between those two stones. Cool. So I'm going to get out of its path and hold a firebolt. For when it runs out? Yeah. So all at once, it's going to make its charge out between these two standing stones, out of the henge, right up to Granik, who's going to get their triggered attack at the same time. And it's going to make an attack on Granik as well. Ah, what? Well, I thought I was luring it. Perfect. As Gorthok was rushing out of the henge, Granik attempts to swipe at his giant nose, but is... <coughs> stabbed nearly through by its tusks, like held up between them on the snout of Gorthok, and it throws him to the ground, practically meeting his maker. Jug, your firebolt, and Gorthok as well. Gorthok's form evaporates, and immediately the the storm clouds spiral for a second Mm -hmm. and dissipate. A beam of sunlight shines through down at the henge. Donabella, quickly administer first aid. Donabella does so. (laughs) Clear. (laughs) And uh, (laughs) that's where we'll end this quest. So check out the DM guide and more in the Dragon of Icefire Peak playlist. Thank you for watching and keep building.